This is Sunseeker's brand new 65 Sport Yacht, and it's an intriguing boat. The amount of detailing that has gone into this is just incredible. And it starts literally as soon as we step onto the boat, because look at the way they've done these steps here. What they've done, in fact, is they've used Flexi-Teak in order to give this curved and formed appearance. Now, just to show you exactly what difference that makes, if you go and have a look at this boat next door, this is how steps normally look up onto the back of a boat but look at the difference this makes it's just fantastic and then the way that they've mirrored it with this stainless steel trim around here that looks brilliant now you can put a jet ski on here it's a high low platform but there's also a garage in here thing i'm going to show you in there because it is rather impressive now there's a couple of very interesting points about this some neat detailing so for example look at the shower that they've built in up here so you have that so that when you come out from swimming or whatever it's just like a rainfall shower right there which is brilliant but also look at the way that this is offset it's not in the center line and the reason for that is this will take a williams 395 tender that pulls in in a normal way but it means you can get up around and next to it look at the way this floor is completely flat also means that if you wanted to you could rack this out on this side for dive gear or other bits and pieces so it just gives you a load more versatility than the normal situation of having a rib that goes in and it's absolutely nailed on both sides and once it's in you can't get yourself or anything else in with it this actually makes for a really versatile area i love the way that they've taken the flex all the way into here as well that's brilliant anyway let's carry on up lots more to see and as we head on up what you'll find up here is some pad up on the top some nice upholstery on there that's done really well and here we're starting to see some of the options that you get. There's a lot of different configurations for this boat, so you can really tailor this to exactly how you want it. So on this one, what the owner has gone for is a bench seat here, and then over here there is this area, which is a uh, grill, and then there's sink in there, and then you've also got ice maker underneath and there's room for a fridge next to it if you want as well this is just storage on this particular boat however if you prefer you can have a bar here so what that means is that this flip over section here and the reason that this is here is because that's a power window that comes up to close off the saloon there's a door that slides across here as well of course but you can have this much larger so that if you don't have that you can have a bar area here a couple of stools facing in very nice place to have a drink of an evening but there's more because if you would rather you can bring this seating all the way around, do away with that or the bar area and just have seating all the way up here and across here and make this a really massive social area. The table here you can see it's got hinges on that folds out to twice its size, it just comes over and rests over onto this part here. This one's also got the extending bimini that comes out of the back of the overhang and in fact this one is as i mentioned a sport yacht that means it's got the flybridge and i will show you that of course. Intriguingly there's also a predator version and I'll explain the difference to that when we go inside. Now, as we go into here, again, you're gonna see a lot of different options. This has got the galley aft layout, and I will explain why that is an option a bit further into the boat, that'll make more sense. But what you've got here is you've got your Miele oven and your hob, some lovely details like the way that they've done this for the crockery in places like that. And it's a similar deal, actually, if you go over onto this side, look at these for the cutlery. Very nice. And then there's storage about the place and a bin and so forth. And, and a slimline dishwasher there. Now what you'll notice is there's no fridge and that's because the refrigeration is over on this side of the boat. So that is in here. Now, one of the things I do like is the fact that this is completely flat from the cockpit right through this whole main deck, right up to the front where you go down to the lower deck. So that's a really lovely area to go on through. You've got this area which can be for relaxing or for dining. And in fact, that table is a high-low table. It's an electric um, table leg. And also you can see little hinges that all folds out it's much larger. So you can have it folded down as a little coffee table or lifted up and opened out for a bit of internal dining. TV is fixed just here, but if you prefer, you can have a TV that folds away and a bit more seating over on this side. There's a lot of little details that you'll notice, like for example, these stainless steel fillets that they put into here. That incidentally is the wine cooler. And again, more stainless here with these sort of grab areas like so. Now, this one has got this 
glass roof section that tilts for ventilation. That's a nice feature. I mentioned the Predator. If you go for the Predator, you don't have a flybridge. So you have a smooth roof, but then you have a massive opening section. So this whole area here will slide back. So if you prefer that configuration, then it can be done. You just opt for the Predator version. If we head on forward again, it all keeps on coming. Your helm area is here. There's an iPad dock. Look at the way they've done this though. So this is proper sort of retro styling across here, like a vintage car. And I love these recessed dials, like an old sports car. But what you can do with these, there's a little control knob here. And as you turn that, it reconfigures these, depending on what you want. So it's a beautiful meld of latest technology, but with that old fashioned styling. Then you've got your Garmin screens up above there. So navigation and radar and that kind of stuff. And then over here, engine controls. IPS docking control and so forth. Another thing to look at is this screen. It's a massive one-piece windscreen and it's a double curvature so it curves that way but it also curves that way. That is a very expensive piece of glass. It did tell me how much it was but I don't think I'll repeat it. It was a lot. Um, let's move on a bit further. Again you see those integrated these grab rails in places like this. It's a nice idea. You've got steps on down to the lower deck then and that brings you down to this lobby area. Now again, various choices down here, and I will explain. If we head on through here first of all, this then is the VIP guest cabin. Really good size, really nicely done. Love the way they've done the trick lighting in places like this and across the back here, all very nice. And also things like this. So that lifts up like that to give you a little dressing area. You have, of course, got illuminated hanging lockers in places like that, and then you've got storage up behind here and so forth. Big windows in here as well, so a great view out. We are at the Cannes Boat Show at the moment. This is interesting. They finished this for you can drop your watch and other bits and pieces into there, but that area there is an inductive charging uh, area. So if you drop your phone onto there, and it charges it for you overnight. Again, more of this lovely detailing. Look at this, the way this has been backlit and stainless steel edged. That's really nice. Let's come back a bit further. There's drawers under the bed. These hatches here are access hatches for systems. So that's a quick sneaky look at that one. I'll show you what I mean. There we go. Bow thruster, for example, in that one. And incredibly, <laughs> that's lit. I don't think I've ever seen that before. That there, right there, that's attention to detail. That's brilliant. AV equipment in here. And you also have, as you would expect, an ensuite. So that's in there. Separate rainfall shower. And then that's obviously your sink and storage again in little areas like this. So that is the ensuite to that cabin. And there's something I've not really seen on this size boat before, and that is that there's a third cabin here. That in itself, not too unusual. Very nicely done. Uh, two single beds as you can see again a lot of trick lighting around in places like this and up around here but this has got its own ensuite up into there so it's completely separate ensuite now the thing is that the master cabin which i'll show you in a minute also has an ensuite so that's fine three ensuite cabins in a 65 foot boat brilliant but would you believe if we go over here there's a day heads. So not only are all the cabins on sweep, but there's also a separate dedicated day heads as well. That's what I don't think I've ever seen on the 65 foot sports cruiser before. That's remarkable. I've seen it on full flybridge boats, but not on a sports cruiser like this. Okay, we're gonna talk about options again now because this doorway here takes you back into the owner's cabin. And this is impressive because what it drops you down into is this big lobby area just here separate to the actual sort of sleeping area and through there what's nice about this is imagine if you want to work on the boat spend a lot of time on it you could use this as an office area and keep it completely separate this pulls out like so so you can sit there and work or do your makeup or whatever else you want to do there and that is a really lovely comfortable area to come into load more storage again in places like this, the lighting again up through here, that's all very nice. 
drawers underneath. Now over on this side there is space for a washing machine but this particular owner has chosen not to have a washing machine. There we go. He's chosen to have a big fridge in his cabin instead. Good for him. Or her of course, I don't know. There's a pocket door on this incidentally. So that slides across like that. Okay, let's head on back a bit further. I'm going to talk about more options in a second. This then is the owner's cabin, and that is lovely. Full beam of the boat. Again, a lot more of this trick lighting and a lot more of these lovely finishes on the doors. So that's into the ensuite. Huge TV in here as well. A lovely place to come and tuck yourself away and watch a movie. Um, if we go around here, this takes us into the ensuite. Love the finishing areas like this. That looks really smart. Toilet there, of course. And, uh, and then a separate rainfall shower in here. But that is a nice cabin, isn't it? Beautiful. Okay, let's head on a bit further because I want to talk about options. You can, if you wish, choose to have, instead of that door there, a door here. And in fact, I think they bring the whole thing over a little bit. And that means you can use this for something else. And the options that you have are, you can have a fourth cabin with bunk beds in. So that'll take you up to obviously a four cabin layout. Um, and also it means, of course, that that extra toilet comes in very handy because it means all the cabins still have their own toilet. But another intriguing option is that if you want, you can have the galley down here. So had this as a cabin, had this as the galley, and then you don't have that galley aft layout on the main deck, what you do up there is have a load more seating. So it just depends how you're using the boat and what your preferences are, but it's really great to see all these different options and be able to choose exactly what you want. More of these access hatches here, again, these are for systems, like so. A bit of plumbing in there. What else can I show you? Oh, you might notice these hinges. People are gonna ask what's under the hinges. That, just a big storage area back underneath there. There we go. So that is the accommodation. Love features like this. Look at the way they've done this with lighting underneath, but also lighting up above as well. That's rather nifty. Let's carry on up a bit further. So this is what I mean. If you had the galley down layout, then this can extend your seating all the way back. You could have this as a massive social area if you wanted because you could have the seating on this side as well with the high-low TV instead of that one and really have the ultimate party boat. Brilliant. Loads more to see. Let's go and take a look at the decks and pop my old shoes back on. There we go. Okay, we'll head around this way. There's doors in the side. In America, for example, they're often more alongside a key, so that's a great way on and off. Again, more of this little detailing. Look at these put these Sunseeker logos in the scuppers. So that's the water that comes down, sort of running back into the cockpit. It drains down through there. And also, if we come back here, you've got stern uh, winches for when you're winching into the key when you're stern two berthing. But look at the way they put this little stainless steel plate on. I don't know how you can see that. But yeah, there we go, with the 65 logo. That is a little rope bin. So that when you've winched in, you can drop your ropes into there. Let's head on round. Look at this glazing on here. It's huge, isn't it? Let's come right up. Now this is interesting. You've got this beautiful line. You can see the way it follows down here. And quite often when you get that, you end up with like a cutout where the seating is across the front. What they've done with this is they've kept this line intact all the way through so you don't spoil the lines of the boat. It does mean you have to step across to get into this area. Um, but it does mean, obviously it is a sports boat, it is about style and performance. Um, you keep those beautiful looks rather than having that sort of break in the, uh, in the section there. Also, very, very handy for keeping extremely small dogs in. <laughs> okay, I made that up. These are um, carbon fibre poles, and that is to support the bimini that this one's got over this area. Obviously, you don't run with that up, that's just when you're at anchor or perhaps you're berthed in the med stern to the, the, uh, to the key and you want to have a bit more privacy so you're up here on the front instead of at the back. That's what that does. Um, some bathing here of course and then seating around there. Let's head on around a bit more because I really want to show you the flybridge on this. It's intriguing. These are little storage bins in here and they drain as well which is nice. 
So you put wet fenders or ropes in there, they ain't gonna stay wet, the water can get away. Look at this windscreen, this is what I was talking about, this double curvature windscreen, it curves that way and it curves that way. That is a serious piece of glass. And that's that opening section we looked at above the helm. Okay, let's carry on back down this side because we're going to swing round and head up onto the flybridge. And this is intriguing. Look what they've done here. Now, this is a sports performance boat. You can opt for up to 2,000 horsepower, so you can have twin 1,000 horsepower engines. So it's got some serious grunt. We'll talk about that in a minute. But look at these seats. They've turned this into like a sports car area. This looks fantastic. What a dynamic place to drive the boat from. And you'll be thinking, well, that's fine, but what's that steering wheel doing up in the air like that? I'll show you. The idea of this, and it's genius, frankly, is that you can stand here. Okay, you're maneuvering the boat into an area like this, all very tight. You want to stand up, see what you're doing. You can stand here and the helm is right here where you need it. The joystick control is right here where you need it. And you can stand and look out and get the kind of view that you need. However, you get out the harbour, you want to go into sports car mode, park yourself down here, drop that down and we are ready to go. Look at that. That is a proper sports car driving experience because you've got the bucket seat, you've got your feet on these supports here, the wheel is right here and suddenly you can really enjoy the performance of this boat. What a brilliant place to drive a boat from. That is absolutely fantastic. You could really have some fun with this boat. They put the throttles down here, feels a bit like you're in an aircraft. And then you've got your Garmin screen down there for your navigation. And those instruments, again, like we saw down at the lower helm, which again, you've got a selector here, you can flick through and you can dial up whatever you want to display in the center. So you have revs around the outside. This one's configured to knots at the minute. And then this one over here is now on depth or as you can see, it's flicking through rudder and so on. There we go, course over ground, whatever you want to have that set to. You've also got controls down here for the Garmin screen. So those are remote controls for that. You don't have to reach and prod away at the screen. That little fellow there is a scan scut, scan scut, I'll try again. That is a scan strut charger. So you drop your phone into there. I wonder if it's on, let's have a look. I've got one of these on my boat. This is the only thing that my boat has in common with this one. Um, all right. So that does that. There we go, it's charging up. And there's also another uh, scan, I can't speak today, scan, scan strut charger here. This one, I've got one of these on my boat as well. That's for, uh, that's for plugging, where's it gone? There we are, over there, USBs into, for charging whatever you want to charge on there. Let's take that off before I wander off and forget it. That's the only thing that my boat has in common with this one, that and the fact that it floats. But isn't this brilliant? It is such a nice idea. I can just imagine coming out with this and just having such a blast with it, which you kind of don't normally do with a 65 foot boat, but with this, you definitely could. Uh, what else can I show you up here? If you go on around the back, you've got a drawer fridge down here so you can keep drinks cool. Again, more of this lovely stainless steel detailing down across in places like this. This has got lift up sections so you can sit facing forward, you can drop it flat. And in fact, they're at this end as well. So that will lift up in the same way. So if you want to face backwards, you can do. Love the fact they've color coded everything. The radar, the searchlight, the GPS aerials, the antennas, everything's color coded black. That's nice detailing. That's fantastic, but I love that. I think that is a really neat feature. It's fun and that's what these sorts of boats should be all about. Let's press on a bit further. More to see, would you believe? Okay, back down here. Now these boats are typically owner operated and that's why you've got that wonderful driving position. However, there is space for a crew. If you wanted to occasionally, perhaps you're doing a longer journey, you want to take somebody with you just for an overnight, there is a space underneath here. If we lift that fella up and open that one. Now, if you are looking to have regular crew, this isn't the boat for you. As I say, this really is an occasional extra space. You might want to, you know, a teenager to come and sleep in here out of the way. Tricky blighters they can be. But we'll go on down and have a look. You could also just configure this as a storage area if you wanted to, which is, to be honest, is what a lot of them get used for. But you have got a full-size adult bed in here and there is a loo down underneath there. And uh, a little sink in here as well. But I have to stress again, 
this isn't a normal crew boat. So people look at these lines and go, well, I wouldn't let my crew sleep somewhere like that. Well, no, well, if you had crew, you would be buying this boat. It is just an occasional extra space for when it's needed. Got some feet going past. Last thing to show you then is engines. And we access those. Let's drop that one back down first. There we go over here so these lovely stainless steel doors we close those over first of all like that again you've got these beautiful and gray sunseeker logos these are the switches for things like the lights and the garage open and uh, the bathing platform up and down that kind of stuff is all controlled from there and this one then takes us down to the engine compartment So in here are a pair of Volvo Penta IPS 1350 engines. There we go. They are a thousand horsepower each, and they're giving the boat a top speed of 35 knots. But what's interesting is that if you drop the speed right back, if you cruise at 10 knots to get your maximum range, you'll get 750 nautical miles out of this. So you've got the distance if you want it, you've got the performance if you want it. That is a nice engine space, isn't it? I love those engines. They also do a 900 horsepower version of this. You can opt for 900 horsepower engines, which begs the obvious question. If you're buying a boat like this for X million pounds, why on earth would you have the slightly less powerful engines? I bet they'll never sell them with those in. I bet they'll all go out with these in. Would be my guess. Perhaps we will prove you wrong. What else can I show you in here? Seakeeper. This has got a Seakeeper uh, stabilisation system. What this is, and in fact it's worth looking these up, they're fascinating. It's a gyro stabiliser. There's a gyro in there that spins at a colossal speed in a vacuum. And then because uh, you have a gyroscopic force then holding, uh, holding itself upright, you've got something to push against. And it, uh, it then uses hydraulics to then, as the boat starts to heel one or rock one way or the other, it pushes back against it, holds the boat level. Generator, that's up in there as well. And then other various engineering systems plumbing um, these are the uh, raw water intakes for the engines for example and so forth let's come back down here electronics are tucked in behind these fellas so circuit breakers that kind of stuff that's under there they're quite low over here they always are because that's your tender garage so that's your choice have a tender garage don't get so much height over the engines but you can get right the way around them which is excellent and down in between them and then they put things like uh, filters over on this side um, where you can get them easily so that's a nice idea as well there's even a little camera that little fella da, 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 there that's a little camera so you can keep an eye on this when you're underway from the um, from the multifunction displays cool boat though isn't it i'm rather taken with this let's come back about and we'll go this way oh look at this sunset can how nice Right, let's drop that one back down, spin it across, and I think we'll sit up here with Maggie, and we will say a huge thank you to Sunseeker for organising that tour for me, really appreciate it. Let me know what you think of this one, I think it's an intriguing boat, and I'd be interested in your comments, and we will look forward to catching on another one of these very soon. Take care, bye-bye.